we will go ahead and check the bearing surfaces for any type of flakes or burrs like with the cam bearings I had to scrape a little bit out of the channel where there was some flaking no big deal sometimes when you're installing the cam you'll actually have to use a bearing scraper it's a three-sided tool and you actually sometimes have to score the edges slightly off slightly some of the babbit to uh, make the cam fit okay before you do that crank down your main caps the torque specs first because sometimes that could actually twist the block and change it a little bit and you might not be as bad as you think so once we've installed these we've wiped them lightly with oil and then wiped them off we don't want to film on there we just want a little bit to protect the camshaft because we're going to plastic gauge to double check again okay also when the cam was out this is when you would have used your your caliper or your uh, micrometer to check the insides actually your bore gauge would work I used my micrometer and to check your cam clearances from the inside diameter of the new bearing versus the outside diameter of the journal okay so wipe these dry do the same for our caps and we will set our crankshaft in place we will plastic gauge it torque them down to spec check them all then we will pull the crankshaft out again assembly lube heavily reinstall keep your finger out from in between the gear that's not fun and go around and tap down and make sure that none of these moved obviously we double check while it's out just to make sure our specs of the book our bearing sizes and our plastic gauge are all right you can't have too many ways of having a peace of mind can you right plastic gauge we want it straight we want it perpendicular a little dab of vaseline hold it in place we'll torque the dry caps down to spec 75 to 80 we're gonna go 75 we don't want to keep stretching the threads we'll save the 85 for the final torque down all right our plastic gauge is in here we are evenly coming from the middle out i like to go torque them about halfway then torque them down the rest of the way visually inspecting or evenly going down as we're starting them and then we remove and check our gauge remember keep everything clean especially dry don't spin the crankshaft like like you could see here in this old bearing that scorch line something came through the oil hole and once again we could see our plastic gauge is two thousandths of an inch that is within our clearance and that's good we're going to take these all off clean them up the assembly lube assembly lube okay i went ahead and plugged one side a hole with my finger and filled all of these squeeze tight with hype lube okay we'll take some more lube and spritz it in there and torque our caps back down remember it's a lot easier to spin with oil in here as opposed to this assembly lube it's thick so that should give you an idea what happens when you put too thick of an oil or you're running summer weight in the winter you don't want anything on the mating surfaces when you bolt them down because there is a film and you should understand that these this isn't metal touching the bearings this is floating on a thin film of oil up to a thousandths and five tenths inch thick in between the wall and the side about clearance so if you think about that there's about a thousandths of an inch clearance 
and just because we tightened down evenly this cap was in about a sixteenth of an inch that way and still torqued down there's some play you still have to make sure that they're lined up okay okay this is what feeds the heads they get in there real nice the rest of these passages carry coolant also, you might find that these cam lobes end up lining up off to one side. That's good. That's how it's supposed to be. That way the lifter rotates and wears evenly. Okay, there's a trick you could do if you have one that happens to sit in the center. You could simply grind a slight chamfer on the one edge so it's contacting more to one side and that will cause it to rotate and last longer All right here we are again now that you can see we finally got a little bench space back had to make a couple tools you could have used the socket I guess if that's all you had but as you can see I had to take this piece of steel here and machine it to with the saw blade machine it to fit around the gap here so that it's seated nicely against a good round pressure point in here and a good pressure point how we could press this wrist pin out with our ball joint removal tool press in a vise here we go Now we don't want to use it to install because we would be pushing against the piston here and would damage our new pistons. Uh, we could cut an insert to fit in there. They make a special tool to fit in there for the press. What we're going to do, all right, we have our little jig set up here so that when the rod is up against the edge of the piston and the pin is up against this stop, when it slides back, it's centered. You can figure out a little math. We have our rods here in our toaster oven getting up to 375. Pins are in the freezer. We're getting close. We're about 350. Right, we've lubed up our surfaces, wiped everything clean, lubed the cylinders. We've installed our rings. Show you that in a second. They're all lubed, everything's lubed up. We're gonna drop these in. All right, the chamfered side goes towards the front. And we'll simply install our bearing and torque it down. Okay, and we evenly torque. Get about halfway there, halfway there. 600 inch pounds Fifteen now We're not degree in the cam. We're not getting crazy because you would need an offset key To move the cam a little bit see one tooth is eight degrees if you wanted a uh, I guess at the factory, depending on if it was for a truck or if it was for like a Lodestar, like this engine came from, here the timing would be advanced an extra four degrees depending on the actual gear where the groove was ground for the keyway in the gear itself. And while after the first time I torqued down my main bearings, um, I did uh, rotate it a few times, did it a second time. Uh, a few of them turned a little bit before they torqued again after that. And just right now, I 
tapped on tap tap with my mini ball peen hammer really quick little tiny taps and this was the only one but this one actually torqued a little bit more when I tapped it so it seems crazy but it made a difference and as crazy as that last step seems I torqued spun them around retorqued and like I just did and I tapped the connecting rod bolts now and a couple of them went a little bit before they torqued and clicked again and one of them went even a little bit uh, surprisingly an amount that was like wow no way I missed that but uh, hey in my strive to perfection on a whim I had a good idea and it uh, it helped because I'm too sexy for my pan difference here being is that this is a standard pump for the front sump oil pan like in the trucks that won't fit in there obviously took my trusty little grinder and buzzed off the crimp tap it out new gear goes in the assembly loop one's a male one's a female there we go. When that's sealed, that's how oil's pumped. So we pull the cotter pin, pull the spring, behind it comes our little piston here. Simply reinstall our piston, chamfered end inward. New spring. Insert our retainer washer. And we will bend both ends right over. This is a relief. Uh, it pushes against that spring when pressure gets too high. As you can see, these gears are flush with the top it says to maintain three thousandths from the top of the gear to the plate that's going to made here they give you two three thousandths gaskets you use one or two uh the gasket's gonna crush a little bit a little more lube in there for now give it a little spritz clean lid plate hand tight then just a quick we're not going to crank on them. With the double gasket, it's not scraping. We'll measure according to instructions. Crimp the sleeve. We'll score it with a little hacksaw blade there a little bit. And we will install onto here. Guess it would be nice to have a little cup that was perfectly rounded fit in. Shim everything up. We want to make sure this is all level height. Uh, everything's level. We're not uh, binding when we hammer down here. We made a mark from the edge into this mark. On our shaft, we're straight up and down. Nice. Alright, we're going to pull out our old washer. Lube up and install our new one. Squirt in some assembly lube. Two gaskets come with the bottom end kit. You could see, only goes one way. Okay, we put our gaskets in place. Assembly lube it up and we'll place it down in the hole where the bronze bushing we might have tapped out Don't forget to tap it back in if we had to replace it. Okay, then we could Lube up the end of our pickup slide it into the pump with a little twist twist it back down Here onto this cap bolt which you will need to take off of your four-cylinder if you've upgraded or you will need to take off whatever your scout engine was install our rear main seal the right direction facing outward but we'll put a dab of oil on the outside edge of the uh, on the metal surface all right it's going to seat in there up to where the chamfer is you can see just about with this uh they give you this gasket here to put behind it to seat it if you happen to have a, a groove worn here if it was already leaking uh, you put the spacer and then it makes it ride on a different spot. Okay, we'll tap the seal right out the face Okay, and support it evenly on the ridge right on the edge. We don't want to Distort our aluminum cover Okay, a little gasket shellac to both mating surfaces uh, Just to ease insulation and uh, we will tap it down with a little plate until it's 
even here then we will use once again something to tap the old one the rest of the way down until we hear it see and that's that so what I like to do is I like to put it on just the cover side same for the oil pan and then I like to set my gasket in place here that way it's sealed against the part that could flex and if we ever have to pull it off for any reason in the future it'll stay stuck to the lid and not to the block there we go and then we'll put our bolts through okay all of these bolts should be protruding through the same height you have one shorter and two taller just a dab of oil on the threads for torquing and that's it we make sure our little pipe fittings were tapped down here and they go about they go two to three turns past hand tight you can't really get a proper torque on these they're all in here hand tight what we have to do is install our balancer pulley set up, lube up both surfaces, okay, all around, inside, everything, and then we're going to line up the keyway here and install. And then we'll tighten it down with the impact once it's hand tight. This way, we ensure that the timing cover, because it's a little loose in here, is centered around the pulley surface here that rides in the seal all right now they make a sleeve that goes in between here that you could put over here if it's worn felpro recommends with their particular gasket here not to use a sleeve whatever this uh doesn't need a sleeve anyway so we're going to tighten this down then we're going to tighten these down don't forget to check that for torque once you got the flywheel back on okay now that we're centered here on the gasket we could see it moved a little we could uh, tighten these down evenly we'll shave that with a razor blade and install our pan now we'll take our little plugs here we've cleaned up all the surfaces dried them make sure the tool you're installing them with is smaller than the hole otherwise the suction will just keep pulling it back out okay pans clean holes are clear wiped on a thin layer and just the pan side okay I wiped a little oil on the inside of there we want to make sure we don't have any uh, gasket sealers seeping in there we'll set our gasket on here we've uh, put a little dab of oil here as recommended because the cork likes it when it's seating up there and we'll install our pan just hand tight little quarter inch driver you, we're only putting the slightest film on the one side so it's tacky to the part that comes off not the block just like we do to everything all right i see it's stuck inside motors clogs in places you got to be very careful with this stuff i even go as far as wiping off the edges and the inside with a rag add the zinc to the filter lube up the ring oops one little thing i like to do since it's fresh and we're painting i'm going to trim this gasket overlap here and that way it looks clean it'll look better when it's painted hey okay, clean dry surfaces put a little mr oil in the cylinders okay gaskets only go on one way set in our guide pins let's set the head on There you have it, heads installed. I like to torque them halfway there, then three quarters of the way there, then to the 100 foot pounds they're supposed to be. Uh, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just the way they came out, okay? Dab of oil on the threads, dab of oil on the washer. When it's all done, I like to take a mini ball peen, peen them all on the heads a couple times. Torque them again. Screwdriver or something and 
fish that out that starts to pop out yeah see there you go okay we're gonna take all these apart I like to clean them off by hand that way you're feeling them checking for marks everything like that put a little pressure and spin it with a little oil on there so we're not scratching and you could check to make sure it's not moving okay now main thing here you're gonna want to do is check these hear that hear this one if one's hard too hard to blow to pop the valve there all we do is add a little little heavier stuff happens every time with these cans swish it around in there they should all also have a nice see how they all have that round pattern in the back that's because they're rotating like they're supposed to be you know check them out you might have to replace one or two another thing you could check in here in the camera yeah you could see the wear marks where it's riding you could check that up against here you know on each one and you could check to make sure one hasn't been riding up and down in a different area than the rest of them that one's probably bad if it is or that one's good and the rest are bad haha <laughs> anyway if you can't get any of them to just like that okay by cleaning them you're gonna have to replace it put a this is actually mystery oil in there only a third way full they recommend kerosene in the book but we're gonna use this then we have our clip on our push rod we just put our do did in the do dad and we'll take our push rod push it down put our little clip back in the groove it's a big pain in the butt that one went easy you know make sure we're seated we'll take our tap it put it in some mystery oil and we will pump it until we feel it built up a little pressure and then we know it's full of oil okay if you have a lifter that you can't push down at all take it apart clean it again so the good thing about this shellac is it will act as a thread lubricant and takes a while to dry and once it dries it will lock like a thread lock it takes up to 350 degrees gee happy freaking new year so we're gonna chase out all of our threads again with a tap all right our new bolts came in as you could see big difference that's what they are well the Michelin manual says the torque day is to 2530 so with the brand new bolts once I got to 19 I stopped something's wrong well the actual IH manual says these are 14 to 16 well the bolt manufacturer says the grade 5 bolt here is not to be torqued beyond 20.5 foot pounds luckily i did not go beyond the manufacturer's spec did not overstress them we're going to reuse them so we've cleaned them up we've soaked them down with marvel we spritzed this down with marvel and we've even spritzed down the inside of our valve covers with marvel then I went ahead, put a little thinner in here, and filled up every screw hole. I've already cleaned and chased all these again just to be safe. And then we blow out each hole. See, that's through. And because that's through, we're going to use sealer in here. Okay, a little bit on the end is all you need. Okay, flip them so they're all hanging down. We got our three bolts in the larger holes. 
and we'll just walk her, roll her on. We could start them on the first couple threads. Make sure all of our little push rods are in our little spots. We're not even putting any pressure. We're just setting them all a tiny turn past the heads resting. You can see I have these little military spec washers in between the large ones because they had a tighter tolerance towards the inside of the bolt. And we're going to tighten from the middle out. Okay, so just keep giving little turns until you feel them all just snug in. We also have a dab of oil underneath the washer's head. Now we could do the same thing with our torque wrench. You'll notice sometimes I like to go to the higher end of the torque spec. That's because these are old bolts. They're already stretched. These are new bolts. We're going to go near the bottom of the torque spec this time because they're newer. We don't need to go crazy. We'll put them in the middle. 150. We'll start them all at 150 inch pounds. Or about 12. Once again, from center out, stepping up, we're going to want to take them down the 180. One ninety six max. Okay, now that our pump's on, what we do here, we have to keep turning the motor a little bit to uh, line up everything and make sure the holes line up and smooth. So we'll, with a screwdriver that fits down in there, or a drill attachment, or a primer tool if you want to pay for one, you just see that. That's the rocker feed. See you pump out the, that one that's off. If you put your finger on it and turn it, you'll feel it start to build up a little pressure. A little self tapper in the end of my screwdriver. I study my hand on the block, study the driver with a little oil in my hand. Look down in there and we can see it seeping out the edges of our bearings and everything. We can see the lifters pump up as soon as we give it a little. Uh, oh yeah. Just be careful, get it flush with the head. Okay. Uh, the little end of the gasket, it sticks up. All right, number eight cylinder. We're going to stand on the passenger side, put something in the hole, something not going to scratch things, touch the top of the piston when it's near top dead center on compression stroke, meaning both of these push rods are down, the valves are closed. That's where the timing dots are lined up. That's also where it says zero here. You want to check it. When you're turning the motor with your other hand, you could feel when it starts stops pushing up and starts going down again. Turn it back, turn it back, turn it back, turn it back, find it. There's top dead center. Sometimes the mark's a little off, you just want to check. Right, we're going to clean up our pan here. We're going to do the same to our valve covers. All right, these bolts, what happens is usually people over tighten them trying to stop a leak. Okay, the gas gets hardened, whatever. So you're going to have to take some of these here. And on a straight flat surface, you could grip it and just give it a little. Okay, and straighten them out. Because you'll notice that these will be bent. Loop, loop. Because someone tightened them down and of course the rest of it stays. Now in areas like here and in here we can't use the pliers so we'll have to use a socket in there like a dolly and uh, hammer it down against a uh, anvil or maybe you got surface on your vise whatever and uh, straighten it out otherwise it's going to leak. Okay, Clean it up. Alright. 
outside surface of the wire wheel inside lightly brush it by hand and then wash it up okay same thing for the valve covers make sure they're straight you can see here it's easy to tell by just setting the pan on dry get an idea okay you also want to change this grommet here if you have one you got to get it straight or it's never going to seal don't go goop and gasket maker on there that's just going to cause you problems okay now you see when it's centered how it doesn't quite line up with the holes it's because you don't have the gasket on so that little bit of the gasket difference is going to rise it up and make the difference it's on an angle same thing happens if you deck the block to, when you deck the block you've just moved this down okay you've changed it you now you have to resurface this on a different angle so that the new manifold fits okay remember you could do what we're doing here you could get crazy but once you start getting crazy you're getting real crazy you better have deep pockets as i was saying see see how it sticks up a little on the end there and a little bit there still we'll have to dolly that up a little wow i straightened the edges out and you could see here it was leaking before someone tried to over tighten it because it needed a gasket you could see the hammer marks in here and a couple up front where someone put a screwdriver and hammered on there and somebody tried to hammer this pan sealed okay we're gonna have to just keep working this all right we put a couple washers in here that are the distance of our gasket tighten her down using a screwdriver to lift and tap and just tapping all the way around until we could get something that's just as thick as those washers and gasket equally all the way around the pan okay this is why people have problems with leaks they forget most engines this old aren't running anymore this one is just leaking it's older than I am things need to be straightened out okay so don't be surprised when things cost a little more on these older engines you're not building some slap together once these surfaces are clean we'll take our gasket and on both sides of the gasket this is a 304 one but on both sides we'll coat with the copper coat okay and that'll help ensure a seal and these bolts here they go through to the oil passage all the way so we're going to want to put a little shellac in them threads or sealant okay so that doesn't leak we're going to want to get some here okay because that goes through as well we just don't want any leaks see any straight area here go ahead and give it a little bit of a chamfer just because paint won't stick to a straight 90. in here you can see just because i could just for looks also this hole here is drilled or tapped for a pipe thread fitting okay because the oil stick on a scout is going to be in the pan here because the sump is no longer in the front you know i thought about putting another drain here for that last little bit of oil but then i realized something i think there's a reason for this this is going to get banged up plugs could get ripped off off-roading it's already dented a little from being scraped up on stuff okay and it's a scout all right so we put a micro film as small as we can smear on the gasket side that touches the pan stick it to the pan center the only place in the book i'm using thread lock where it was not recommended is going to be here okay it'll help seal those through holes it'll help keep it in place since we can't get at these later okay now i had to go around i ended up once i tightened them i very lightly hear it went around and tapped the edges so everything was straight again okay tap down here again something you shouldn't have to do but this pan was already distorted and somebody already hammered on it i also wiped it clean with some lacquer thinner first for the surfaces and the underside i smeared it with some oil everywhere but the mating surface to keep it protected we don't want to paint under there now we're going to mask this off 
and we're going to paint this lid in place here once this settles up a little bit okay i'm going to clean it up some lacquer thinner paint it up because we're not going to be able to paint this when it's on same thing bottom side of our manifold here we're going to want to paint that we can't get at it later well look at how much that oozed out that little tiny film so that should show you when you have two flat mating surfaces they don't need sealer that's a hack fix okay and also parts you're going to see if you have the time you might want to paint them first before you put them down because paint's not going to stick to the silicone on the edge of the gasket here anyway you know you'll have a little black line it might start to peel up later no one's going to see this also before we paint we're going to mask this off We'll put our gasket on, we'll slice it around the bottom of the gasket with a razor blade and peel off the surface that's going to be exposed, make sure that gets painted too. Okay, these surfaces are going to be sealed up. This little edge ain't. That rust will start to form, it'll get under, it'll get under, it'll leak. So we separate our water pump housing here. There's our impeller. Here's the bolts. These ones aren't going to come out without taking the pulley off. This larger one with the nut goes in the top. Okay. And uh, we'll clean it up, prep it, paint the underside so we can uh, bolt her down. So we'll go ahead, remove our mask. And you'll see we went a little over on the edges here. No big deal sand them up right quick we're gonna go ahead just like we did there in the underside mask tape off our gasket cut around it and we're gonna paint the underside because we can't get that once it's on sorry I'm backwards here all right this is a couple rattle cans full of engine enamel 500 degree we tape off here and then we put our gasket on and trace off, cut off the bottom so that that edge that ain't going to be contacted gets protected. Okay, I put a little Vaseline around the edge of the seal with a brush so we don't paint the seal. Okay, everything's taped off, everything's taped off and cut. We put in some crappy spark plugs. As soon as it flashes, that's when we pull the tape off, otherwise you'll get a tape line. Be careful, pull the plugs out too keep it clean okay you can see after painting it the Vaseline just wipes right off and then we'll go touch that up with a paintbrush all right we use our little Schwab up here to copper coat both sides of gaskets a little bit around thin layer thin layer wipe out the insides we'll bolt her down and uh, don't forget to put your mounting plate for your uh, coil on there Okay, you'll notice they designed uh, the bolts different sizes. These ones are smaller than these ones which go here to make up for the obvious difference. Yet, even though the brackets also make up that difference, they don't give you a different size bolt for the ones with the brackets. So, change them if you like. Alright, torqued, retorqued, tapped on all the heads. We're going to go ahead and install our thermostat housing. We'll install the gasket and the gasket, our housing, our little adapter. You see which way the thermostat goes. Little copper thread lock. And pop her down. Now we could give it a final wipe down. Prep it for paint. Slice that gasket off so you don't have to see it. I did shellac the top of this gasket to here and both sides of this gasket here so hopefully if we ever did have to change a the thermostat in the middle of the winter somewhere or something uh, it'll come apart real nice and easy and hopefully yeah, get us home all right now we're going around cleaning up these surfaces okay cleaning up these surfaces these surfaces too okay clean up the edges that are going to contact the water Okay, at least a little edge up to where the hose clamp's going to be. All right, finally back to the fun part. Putting together our clean, shiny pieces like a giant model. 
here it is dry okay the hardener and the paint not only makes it scratch resistant but it makes it chemical resistant because the way it hardens is the way it dries and the particles are smaller and filled in so not only can solvents not get through to wash it away moisture can't get through to the surface to rust it and just like with the hardener the paint's going to be more solid okay tighter pores same for a clear coat it's going to be tighter pores and once again same for a clear that's mixed with the hardener but that's not what we have to work with and here we're all mounted the engine if you had any runs smooth it out okay cover all the threads even the areas that aren't going to mate okay with your copper anti-thread seas back sides of the washers all right the areas you sanded that is going to protect everything okay keep it from rusting keep things from locking in there all right okay very thin layer gasket shellac just on the side of the gasket that's going to go on the pump and pellet area here and uh copper anti-seize on the nuts and bolts the large one on the top we're using new lock washers you can see if they're ever together still not sprung when they're apart you need to replace them this is what keeps them from vibrating loose the slight spring tension helps when they're not cranked down and stretching the threads like when you're torquing them Know your tools this ain't the thing to practice on and just the same as here all right if you're reusing the ones that came off of the four cylinder or the other scout engine okay make sure they're the right size and depth and don't forget to chase all these holes out again after you've got paint on them okay but we do all bolt surfaces here we sanded every surface that mates okay and we painted them with the anti-seas okay that will keep them from rusting and seizing okay go ahead and paint in there one last time in the bolts you can't get at the screws okay don't be afraid you might have to set them down on the surface and tap them back uh, closed a little bit because they'll spread as they tighten. You may have to clamp these two nubs down and hammer it back a little bit to bend them more view shape so that they spring down and hold again. Uh, washer's not needed because this is the spring force here as a lock washer would do. A little lock tighten the threads. We'll wipe that clean, dab the bolt heads. Same thing to the fan after we put the fan on right now. All right, when I put the new O-ring on here and installed, I just slid the one end in and slid it on and installed it, okay? Now, if your ends are chewed up, little anti-seize like I used, copper just for the heck of it, little Vaseline, whatever you got, it's just to lube the rubber seal so it doesn't get torn. Sand it out real good, bare and smooth. And that's your key to a good seal the rubber o-ring could get caught by the silicone as it sticks to it and tear it it expands you don't want silicone in there since we're doing this now for a test fit and it's cold as hell outside I'll show you this now what we're gonna want to do is just put our gasket on here we're gonna want to put our high temp copper all around each port on the gasket on the manifold and on the exhaust ports okay we're going to want to use copper and ICs on the bolt threads okay and it's that simple okay, and real simple once the exhaust is on we'll slip our pipe up here slip the flange up on here and in between we're going to have this is the new gasket that came with the kit we'll use them just because we have them this is the old lead style one all right what they came with was a steel one that's the one you want okay uh, i've tried these they don't last very long blew out on the way to the show we'll try this 
Who knows? Hey, ultra fine layer of black silicone. We'll slap our gasket on here. Get her all uh, in the place so it holds. And we'll install this valve cover. We straighten it first just like our tappet cover. And these little slots are going to go right in here. All right, and as you can see, that also makes installation not only removal easy. It's a light two finger and thumb feel, not even to the end of my wrench. All right, you're not looking for thread stretch here. You're going to destroy the gasket and flex the pan long before you stretch that thread. Okay, that's why we had to straighten these pans out and covers out is because someone over tightened. All right, these cork gaskets, they're going to swell. And there you have it. Now we have it back to the point of before you were afraid to take it apart in the first place. All right, now we'll go ahead and rotate till we find top dead center. You could see our mark is below. So what we're going to want to do here is come over. Okay, we could poke in that hole to feel that the piston's at the top, of course. We could take this piece of hose, it, we could smush it down over the end here. It blows right out the exhaust port. The exhaust valves open as we turn it. It's now pushing exhaust gas out. And now that we're at the marks lined up here again, blowing the hose again. And it's sealed. That's not top dead center of the compression stroke. We're going to rotate it all the way around again until those marks line up. Hey, we blow through it about a little above here and it's coming out the manifold. Now as we get back down to the mark being halfway there again, that valve's about closing. And it's going to come back up towards top dead center, compressing that before it ignites. See so there's your firing order. You can see number eight in the back there, top dead center. That's timed. Now usually they're timed on number one, but if you've noticed we have a timing gear and another gear. So the camshaft, instead of having a chain and both turning the same direction, our cam spins the opposite direction of the crank. Make sure our bushing's there. We're going to prime it one last time. And then we're going to stop that little slot. So this will drop right in. When this rotor is pointing towards the number eight cylinder, and it's positioned about where we want it midway so we have room to turn it back and forth without it bumping. And we're gonna drop it down into place. It's tricky. See, there you go. We're at number eight, where the cap would be. That was even one tooth off. This is where it needs to be so we could advance it. It's not going to be firing at top dead center. It's going to fire a little before. Oh, yeah. And a new gasket on the distributor base. Okay, we install our hold down bracket. This hose is a vacuum line. At mid throttle, it advances the timing. Race cars don't have it because they don't spend any time at mid-throttle. Okay? It's going to hook to this ported vacuum advance so it's not advancing the timing at idle. At wide open throttle, there is zero manifold vacuum pressure, so it's also going to not be advancing, relying strictly on mechanical weights that swing out inside here to advance. A lot of pre-70s distributors were hooked up to a straight vacuum line not a ported our temperature sensor with a little pipe dope we could then go ahead and screw in our fitting for our power brake booster and our PCV valve a power booster and our vacuum advance are the only vacuum lines that get hooked back up everything else is garbage
will destroy your engine similar to this crap. On the valve cover, we have a port. A lot of times there is, they call a flame arrester, it's silly. This vent can either have a push on style, cause it's sucking air in, or it can go up to the air cleaner. This side would have this rebuildable old fashioned screw in type. This is a 68 one. Now this PCV valve allows pressure to come this way, but not back in because this line gets hooked to there sometimes if you don't have a manifold port like we do here. Sometimes this port is here and sometimes the PCV valve goes here. Back in the 50s what they started realizing is that the blow-by gases contaminate the oil. So what they started doing was hooking up a port would come down to a tube that would go underneath the car so when it was moving it would create a siphon across it and that siphon would pull from either a vented oil cap or a breather vent that would clear out all the gases except on delivery trucks that move slow and at idle you have almost no blow by anyway and it was a great system that unfortunately didn't work for boats vehicles that went underwater through heavy snow which is why during world war ii we developed for our tanks and what have you that would have the engine submerged in water not past our carburetor intake unless we had a snorkel so while we would rather have a road draft tube but some clown decided that 50% of all the evil in the world is caused out of the downdraft tube. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and leave this system because this is an off-road vehicle. Alright, you can install a canister. Looks like uh, with a changeable filter in it. And there will be a little bit of oil and sludge in the bottom instead of burning it in the engine. So everything else gets plugged off any emission things that required those vacuum lines get removed and hard plugged okay one problem we have is some of the later ones will have an air injection port and a pump would pump air back in the exhaust and another port would pump that exhaust fumes right back into here bull just like we took the stuff off our alternator bracket and our power steering pump bracket we don't want to put them on till afterwards. There's going to be some clearance issues installing. The scout for the power steering pump had another pulley bolted on here. We're going to have to put the different fan on because this older fan didn't have that pulley and there's not a spacer in here. The belt will hit. After cleaning up our best fuel pump, right back in there where it was, little gasket shellac on the surface of the gasket that meets the pump that fuel line will route up to our carburetor you want the four hold gasket see here where it's not going to mate put the gasket on cut that out otherwise that part's just going to rot or use the big gasket they use as a heat shield to keep heat from rising up into the carburetor mostly caused by our garbage port Sometimes you'll see them move this fitting to the back of the manifold somewhere. There's no reason because the hose has to go around anyway. Why not just have them next to each other? All right, while it's on the stand, that's all we could do for now. So now we could clean up the surface, okay? We could replace, tap out and tap in a new pilot bushing here. Bearing in our case. If you wait till it's in... You end up having to uh, screw that into the edge and pump it with grease until it pops itself out. By the way, the harmonic balancer and the flywheel for the four-cylinder, they're both non-weighted. You need the weighted balance style for the V8. Okay, 
That's from the four cylinder. This is from the Giant 8. Big difference. Okay, we have it supported by the same place we lifted it in the back, the lower bolts on the tops of the head. That fan's extra long from the load star. You'll see I had to cut the corners so it didn't hit the radiator hose. I still have to get a little bracket to keep these up here. This hose I need to replace and run it along with the old one. Still need a loom for my new wires. A couple pieces I, you know. I'm gonna make my catch can for the PCV soon too. Check out that Lodestar fan. Uh, it's pretty funny. I just got done hooking up, welding up the last seam of the exhaust. It starts hailing. I bolt up the U-joint for the rear. It starts raining. Just as I start lowering the front of the truck, the jack blows out off the stands. And we're done though. It made it. Check this out. This is the 345 ported and polished heads. Rebuilt. I have two and a quarter inch exhaust smoothly flowing down to two uh, two 31 inch length thrush mufflers, which were supposed to be cherry bombs, but they bought out thrush a long time ago. We got a cool sticker for extra money. <laughs> Looks like if you want real cherry bombs, you're going to have to get the uh, Flowtech makes the same style, but they only have the one size. These are double length, so they're not so loud. Right now, they're just dumping out under the truck. I don't have tailpipes from them. I already warmed her up, don't worry. Snappy throttle response. 4160 Holly jetted one size. 